That is this car, yeah. Yo! Yeah, it does, uh... That is a serious wheelie. so blown away because uh, I honestly didn't expect this. Okay, so I got in touch with Ricky from my friend Tommy who lives in Oahu. Yeah. He's like, hey, you gotta meet up with this guy. He knows all the locals. Uh, they'll show you some cool cars and show you a good time. <laughs> I didn't realize that it was gonna be like this. There's so many cool cars oh, in yeah. one place. Yeah. And you guys are all friends and family. We're all family for the most part, yeah. Yeah. And then you guys like to party because... Um, we party hard. Yeah, I see that. Sometimes so, we party a little bit too hard. But. A little bit. And then this problem, these two uh, are pretty much the loudest vehicles here. Yeah, unfortunately. So <laughs> this one is really special to you because this is actually your actual this, first car. I got the car back in 07. I was like uh, 10 or 11 years old. And this was my first car that I got from my dad. Wow. Even way before you could drive, yeah. way before way, you could wrench. Way before I could drive, but you know, the T27 was always my dream car. You know, I always wanted one. Growing up, I had uncles who had them, you know, and it's a car that I liked and I knew that one day I was gonna have one. And, and this one came about and it was, I mean, it was rough. You know, this car had to be brought back from the dead. You're a really big Toyota fan. You actually work for Toyota. Yeah. You actually I, came back just from work just now. Yes, yes, yeah. I you, finished work and I came straight home. Do you work <laughs> at a, a dealership? Yeah, so I work at uh, Big Island Toyota in Hilo as a professional technician. Been there for about six years. And uh, yeah, I mean, everything, that's all I drive is Toyotas, you know. Mm -hmm. Our daily drivers is Toyotas. What we race is Toyotas. Maybe not my engine, but... You know, I want to talk about your your tattoo. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, so I I made that tattoo. You know, rotary Toyota. It's kind of so, why so I did that. I have a question about that. Why is it that you didn't just build a Mazda? For one, Mazdas over here is hard to find. It ain't like the mainland. You know, RX3s, RX2s, R100s. You don't see that stuff over here. You know, there's like one RX3 we know of, and you know that friend of ours. Had that car for 30 plus years, never let it go. You know, and Toyotas was easier to find around here. Because it actually is not so easy for you to just get something from yeah. the mainland yes. and ship it over because it's a lot more expensive. And I'm assuming that it's just a lot easier for you to just get something that's already on the island. Huh? Yeah, it was. But I was always a Toyota fan from, mm -hmm. you know, little kid days and just what I grew up around. <laughs> we'll take a look at the engine, but I, I just wanted to talk about the whole process because when you got this vehicle at 11 years old, what was the, the condition like? Bad. You know, I mean, the car had a lot, a lot of rust. Um, you know, quarters, rockers, fenders. Almost every body part on the car was rotted out. You know, and not, not just surface rust. I mean, it was rotted. So the body work that went into this car, I mean, a lot of stuff was cut, graft, replaced, you know. Some part, most of the parts was from other cars, other similar, you know, TE27s, but some of the metal on the car is, you know, just a regular sheet metal that was made and handcrafted into what it is now. So the TE27, was this a pretty popular car? Was this like an everyday driver car for Hawaii, for Big Island? From what I understand, it's way before my time, but from what I understand from working at the dealership and talking to the, you know, the older guys who's been there for 30 plus years, people bought these cars to save gas back in the day. You know, it was never a performance car, never a sports car. People bought them to save gas and a lot of Japanese people, they love Toyotas and they were the main people buying these cars. 
from what I understand. Yeah, you and know. then this was an original Big Island delivery car. Like it, it came here. Yes. So then that's probably why it was all rusted out, you know, because of the humidity and the okay. weather, rain. I mean, salt water. I mean, there's the climate over here sucks. I mean, there's so much, so much things that can screw a car up. You know, it's not just one thing. You know, the mainland, it's dry. You know, the air is dry. No humidity. No moisture. None of that. I mean, over here, we deal with all those problems and then some. <laughs> so tell me about the paint. The body work and the paint was done by one of our good friends, Rick. He actually took on the project, you know, kind of learning at the same time. He's not a professional by any means, but, you know, he, he asked me if I was willing to let him learn on my car. You know, and I was like, yeah, go ahead, because... Honestly, the car sat, I took it apart to paint it, and it sat not doing anything in pieces, you know, and he asked me if I would let him try it. So I said, yeah, go ahead, and this is the end result we got. Did he do these louvers? The louvers was already on the trunk when I got the car, you know, that long ago. But everything else, I mean, graphing wise you know, body filler, all that was done by Rick. And then what about the pinstriping? Pinstriping was done by this guy, uh, Greg Kobayashi. He's local here. Um, he's been around for you know, a long time and he did a lot of cars over the years. And I brought the car to him when it was finished painting. Why is this called the Boogeyman? <laughs> that's, a, that's a long story a little bit. But the reason the car is called Boogeyman is because I actually had a TE72, a 1.8 Corolla, just like this yellow one. Mm -hmm. And that was the first boogeyman. When I had taken this car apart and uh, hung it up to get body work and painted, I had an 81 that I got from uh, one of my good buddies. And uh, I was racing and playing around with that car because obviously this one was in pieces at that point, you know. But we end, I, end, I ended up uh, building an engine. We turbocharged it. You know, we actually got the car to run 1090s and be a street car that I drove around all over and raised hell everywhere I went, you know, but the, the name Boogeyman came with that first car. And that was because my good buddy that had the car would only bring the car out wee hours of the, of the <laughs> night, you know, late wee yeah. hours of the night. And he would just terrorize the living crap out of everybody. I love that. You know, burnouts, donuts. I mean, no exhaust on it, just making ruckus in the neighborhood. He gave himself that name that he's, he started calling the car Boogeyman. So when I got the car, he said, shit, that name got to stay, yeah. you know? And then now it's transferred to this. And now it's this transferred even to this car. Yeah, it's, yeah. you know. So I took the name with me. And the, the original car, I, I gave the rolling shell to my, my younger brother. And uh, he races it now. But Can we take a look at the engine? Yeah. This is something else. Like, you... Um, everything are insane. Everything was pretty much done by me. You know, a lot of it. You know, my father-in-law, Keelan, my, my dad, Shane, I mean, they contributed a lot to it too. You know, welding, aluminum and stuff like that, but. Where do you do this? Do you, are, are you able to take it to work to work? No, I it, actually, so? um, over at my dad's house, he's got a small little shop that we, we work out of. And uh, the motor is built by me and him, uh, complete you know, from scratch to how you see it. We so, take it apart, we build it, we pour it, we stud the motor, we, we do everything in-house. Nothing gets sent out to be done. So what did you pull this out of? This motor is a, so this is a 12A, it's not even a 13B, this is a 12A, um, which, you know, right off the bat, nobody uses 12As nowadays, you know, and nobody's pushing the limits of them either. What was that out of originally? Uh, first gen RX-7. So oh. 79 to 85, uh, first generation Mazda RX-7. And then, so how many liters is this? This is a 1.1 liter. <laughs> it's even smaller than the 13B. 13Bs are 1.3s. Yeah, yeah. And uh, 12A is just a little 1.1, you know, 1100 cc. Uh -huh. Uh-huh. Um, this one, we have a pineapple racing street port. So it's street ported. It's got a full race exhaust port. Um, the motor has four half inch studs. Uh, two solid 5.8 dowel pins. Um, it uses the second generation Turbo 2 RX-7 flywheel and clutch setup along with the bell housing. 
And uh, also we integrated the second gen crank trigger to run the Howtech computer and all the EFI uh, things that go on in it. So then um, what transmission does this have? So this transmission is from a, a 1971 all the way up. You can find them all the way up to late 70s, early 80s, but Toyota pickup. It's called a, it's a W50 cast iron five speed transmission. So I got an adapter plate that uh, goes from the Toyota transmission to the Mazda bell housing. So I run a Toyota disc with a Mazda pressure plate. So it's a, it's a little Frankenstein, you know, it still utilizes the Toyota transmission and the Toyota rear end at this point. This is so cool. Oh, so it's a, the rear end is from a pickup truck too. Pickup truck. It's a eight inch, it's a eight inch uh, Toyota Hilux rear end. It's got 430 gears in it. And uh, yeah, so majority of the drivetrain is still Toyota except the engine, but you know, I still utilize all of that. And uh, that's what we run with now. This is know? not a show car. This is actually your race car. You yeah. actually take it to the track. Yes, yes. So I take it to the track. I drive it around the island. I mean, we street raced it a lot, you know, at one point. At one point in time, I mean, the car was the fastest car on the street, you know, at one point. Now, I mean, obviously, you know, stuff, stuff came along and people got faster, you know, but when I stopped racing the car in the street, I stopped racing it while it was at the top. Never lost any race. Um, the car did really good, you know, but. It's the boogeyman. It's the boogeyman, <laughs> yeah. So I drove it to Kona, raced it, drove it back Hilo, you know. We drove it down to uh, Kapoho, Red Roads. This car's been around the island and, you know, we, I ran it on the street multiple times. Uh, and then, so have you had a chance to dyno this setup? Yeah, so pretty much right like how you see it. Um, I run it on methanol. So when I race it at the track, it runs on uh, M1. But uh, 16 pounds of boost, the car made 440 to the wheel. Um, that was a fourth gear pool. But um, I got limited on boost because I ran out of injector and I ran out of fuel pump. You know, methanol takes a lot more fuel to burn, especially being that it's a rotary. It also takes double the fuel, plus the methanol takes double the fuel. So I, I didn't get any chance to turn it up more than 16 pounds. But even with that power, the car went 10-3 at 127 in the quarter. And, you know, still streetable. I, I got two separate fuel cells. I got a stock tank and a fuel cell that are on the alcohol in. So, so you could switch it. I switch it, yeah. Yeah, so I, I switch it. I, I got check valves that I swap the fuel in and out, you know. Um, and I just, I go into Haltech and I swap the map over from street map to race map. I made it as simple as I could, you know, without draining gas and filling gas and, you know, it's a pain because I, most of the time, I mean, 90, I would say 95 to 98% of the time I drive it to the track and drive it home. So. And, and it's not like you have to drive that far, right? You don't live far from the track. No, you know, from here is about maybe, I don't know, 15 miles. That's at, at the most, you I'm know. So jealous. So it's not it's not far at all, you know. Without traffic, it's like a twenty minute drive. Amazing. You know. That is so cool. So have you taken this to the other side of the island at all? Yeah. So we we took it to Kona. Um, we street raced it in Kona. Um, you know, this was maybe two years ago, two and a half years ago now. But we brought it over to Kona, street raced some of the Kona guys over there, you know, and uh, we did that for. I don't know, a couple weekends. It's it's about a two hour drive down yeah, here. Yeah, and, and which the car, is the complete other side of the island. Yes. Like you can't get further away, no, basically. No, and, and I drove it there. You know, I drove it there. Um obviously we run slicks on the street, but I drove it there on the street tires, you know, we changed the put the slicks on it and we raced it. We stayed over in Kona. I brought this to the hotel and everything. <laughs> uh stayed at the hotel with this car and then came back the next day. <laughs> I, I just love how serious you guys take it. I, I love that so much. Well, I think we, it's hilarious. Like how you said, we like to party, yeah. you know? So the interior is 100% stock. I mean, nothing is gutted out of the car. It's got full carpet. It's got full interior. It's got full dash, I mean, back seats, nothing, absolutely nothing is gutted from here. I put everything back like how it's supposed to. Um, roll cage was also done by me. I welded this in. I, I also weld too, so 
I welded the cage in. I, you know, we modified it to fit in here. And I actually got the, if you look on that pipe right there, the car is certified by NHRA to run 850s. So the chassis, that this chassis has a 850 cert that is good for three years. I love that you still kept the back seat. Yeah, I mean, so you know, clean. we're big on fast street cars. I mean, by any means, this car is not fast like, you know, some of the stuff in the mainland, but we try to keep everything as original as possible. You know, like I said, even down to my stock gas tank, you know, door, all the door panels is original. Back door panels is original. Carpets original, even the headliner. I had a hell of a time putting that headliner in. Oh yeah. Once because, the cage was finished, I had, right? Because so I, you didn't put the headliner first. No, because I didn't want to melt it as I welded the cage in. So I, all of, the headliner was completely out of it. Um, you know, we welded. I welded everything in, and then I dealt with the headliner after. And it took me a few days to get it all stretched out and all the rods where they needed to be and you know, clamping the front because the, the, the window rubber pinches the, pinches the headliner on these cars. So I had to stretch the headliner and leave it for a couple days. And it was just, you know, but I knew that I had to put it back. You know, it wasn't, if it was missing, it wasn't, to me, it wasn't a complete street car, you know, which is my, that was my whole goal, you know. So, so cool. You don't need a trailer. No trailer. Yeah. So then did you have a chance to weigh this? Yeah, so I did when I finished building the car um, with a full tank of gas in the stock gas tank without me in it, um, the car weighed 2120. That's so light. Light, and that's with, that's with cage, that's with the big turbo that's on the front of it, the cast iron trans, I mean, everything to this car I added weight from factory. And it's two gas tanks. I got a two gallon fuel cell that I run uh, just just, just methanol. methanol inside when I drag race it, and then it still runs on a stock tank. The stock gauge and everything still works. What? This is... So I run the methanol. See, it's dusty because we live on a dusty road, but this tank right here, only methanol goes in here. And I, I got a check valve here right. to shut off the methanol when I'm not using it. And in this stock tank, I made a sump on the bottom, and I got a check valve there also that feeds into a Y go, coming into the fuel pump. So you know draining gas and all that you don't have to do that no not. this is this is so cool i love this car so much i mean obviously we moved the battery to the trunk you know for two reasons i mean clean up the engine bay you know these engine bays is small especially when you start putting turbos and crap that didn't belong in there um so we ended up putting the battery in the back and also to help with some of the weight you know so i tried to keep weight here and weight there so that the ballast of the back of the vehicle is somewhat level you know, so if you, if you strip this out, I bet you you can get under 2000 pounds. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, you know, like I said, it has everything. So if I got it in and actually made a race car out of it, the car would probably weigh 18, 1900 pounds. You know, I could shave easily 200 pounds off but of that's it. That's not the point of this. That's vehicle. not the point, yeah. you know. It, it also blows me away that this is. I mean, we, we, we started this video with this, but this is your first car. Yeah, it and is. This is probably your forever car. You'll probably own yeah, this forever. Yeah, you know, like I make jokes with everybody. I said, I'm going to die with this car. You know, it's, this car is never going anywhere. It's, it's going to stay with me as, as long as it can, you know. And, you know, someday when I have kids and whatever not, I, I hope to pass it down to them or, you know, they take pride in it as well, you know. The car is, it is really special to me, you know. Because, like you said, it's the first car. I got it from my dad. I mean, I, me and my dad bonded and, you know, put this car together. And I started driving this car when I was 16 years old in high school. Mm. You know, I, I, just got, I just got my provisional license. And uh, the car was all ugly. You know, it was rotted out. But we, put a, we had a 13B in here that was just naturally aspirated. No nitrous, no turbo. Because I was just learning how to drive. Um, but we ended up going 1280s. Um, with an NA, NA13B that we had built at home, me and my dad, you know, and, and the bond just, the bond got stronger and stronger, you know, as time went on. So cool. Amazing. So yeah, all tuning, street tuning, everything was done by me. I, I tune it all. I drive so you don't it. need a dyno then? Um, I, I take it to the dyno once I get it close on the street. Got and it. We'll, we'll take it to the dyno just to make sure everything's you know, perfect air fuel ratios and all that is good. How many dynos are on the island? Um, we got one in Kona and one in Hilo. 
Oh, so it's just two? Just two. Yeah, there's not much places to take cars to dyno over are, here. Are they like roller or chassis dyno? Uh, they're all chassis. Okay. They're all chassis dynos. One is in the ground and one is, you know, out of the ground, but Got it. same thing. But it's it's already a wonder that you guys have a racetrack and two dyno shops and all of these awesome drag cars yeah. and like the the island itself, I think the population is about one eighty to two hundred thousand. Very people. is very small. Very small. Yeah. For it being the biggest island, um, because I think all the other islands can fit inside of this yeah. island, right? Because it's so. If not pretty close. Yeah, yeah. So, very very small population. I mean, you know, a lot of us. That's how we know each other. A lot of people. We all know each other. You know, because it's a small place for one, um, and a lot of us race. You know. Yeah. And uh, if not, people knew people from back in the day and now their kids is knows each other and knows their friends' kids. And, you know, there's there's almost nobody you don't know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what Riley is doing right now is he's actually, w w you're actually changing the tune right now? Yeah, we're actually, to spit we're, flames. we're gonna just play with uh, the launch control a little bit. You know, pull, pull a little bit more timing, add a little bit more fuel to see if we can get some flames out of it. You know, obviously the car is on uh, pump gas right now super um so it doesn't throw nearly as much flames as you know obviously alcohol does but i mean we can probably get little ones here and there for sure it already shot some flames <laughs> and i got scared <laughs> while you're waiting tell us a little bit about this orange car the no limit right next so to no limit is that's my brother-in-law's car um he had purchased the car you know from this guy and it was naturally aspirated um it was it was brown got the car from california i don't know if you know uh Toy Auto Clinic, you ever mm, heard of those guys? No. They built the car in California. Got and, it. Uh, the car came over here, my brother-in-law got it. It had some issues, you know. It already had the 13B six port rotor that's in it, but it was just set up NA, nothing crazy, you know. And uh, it had ignition issues and, and just a bunch of little things that we went through and fixed. And then just recently we did a turbo setup on it with a precision 6266. And uh, we went ahead and put Max ECU as the engine management. And I also tuned that, that uh, engine management as well. Did he get it because he saw this car or? Actually, he, he had got the car before he met me. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, so cool. he already had the car before, but recently we did a lot of work to it. I mean, the turbo, the, you know, it's got direct fire ignition coils. I mean, the wiring all was done by me. Rear end, it's got a Toyota truck rear end, 48 gears. Have you ever lined up with him? Uh, at the racetrack? Not, not not at the racetrack. We just play around on the street, you know, mm. burn out and, and just egg each other on, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. But, uh, so uh, what do you have in here? Elite 1500? Yeah, I'm actually in the wrong software though. So when I first got the computer, it was, I tuned it on uh, Haltech ESP. Mm -hmm. But I since then, I recently updated to uh, NSP, which is uh, the newest software of Haltech. The car has an Elite 1500. The car still runs on wasted spark ignition, but it is coil unplugged. All the wiring in here was all done by me. I mean, nothing in this car really sent out to anyone. I mean, I, I literally built it from the ground up. Yeah, you know? part of it is that you, you, you know how to do it, but also on the island. There's not much big shops or anything you can take stuff like this to, to have it built, yeah? So a lot of us learn on our own and try on our own and make mistakes on our own. You know, it's just, it's one of those things, you know. We all learned, we all tried it, we all did it, you know. And as time went on, we got better because we kept playing with it. Like, you know, obviously I went to UTI and I was there for a couple of years and I, I learned, the, I had a small class on tuning, you know, but obviously it didn't teach me what I know today, but it helped, you know, knowing the basics. And uh, I was able to get this car tuned and that car tuned. And uh, yeah, there's not much guys, period, that tune rotaries here. Mm -hmm. Got you know, it. My dad, Shane, is, uh, he, he also tunes his own rotary, you know, and I learned majority of what I know about tuning rotaries from him, you know, and it came from there. But as far as like taking it to a shop here, there's nobody to even messing with rotaries. You know, there's no one to rebuild it. There's no one to tune it. There's nothing. There's just not that many RX-7s on the island. Period. Right? And they're not they're not popular here, yeah. you know. And the engine is like the the engine is like Chinese when you tell somebody about it, you know. Yeah. It's complete different from anything else. So, you know, it, it makes a big difference. 
I wanted to be like my dad and yeah. do what my dad did. And, you know, that's that's where the whole rotary deal came in. You know, that's that's where I grew up and that's what I was comfortable with. And I learned from a young age how to take them apart and rebuild them and, you know, set clearances on side seals and, you know, check tolerances of bearings. And I learned that at a super young age. What the? I love that it was just unprompted. You just started doing that. And also another thing is, if you did that in LA, I feel like a bunch of cop cars will just roll up with their guns drawn because it sounds like machine guns going off. Yeah, so as you can see, I mean, just that little changes I made, I mean, it definitely, it changes the sound and, the, and how the two-step reacts, you know? We ended up pulling about 10 degrees of timing out and I added about 30% fuel um, to give it that bang, you know, and to also, I, I set it to cut off, so just that small changes over there on the Haltech, I mean, we was able to make that change dramatically. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I'm so glad I brought earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I would be deaf. Dude, those are big flames. <laughs> yeah, I, and, and it comes out of the wastegate here? Or? Yeah, yeah, that's the wastegate dump. It's, you're about to burn a hole into the ground. <laughs> That thing is so cool. Thank you. You're gonna light some grass on fire. Yeah, we could, we could, <laughs> we could. Dude, thank you so much for showing us this build. This is, I love this car so much. I love this kind of build because of the tradition, of the history, of just everything. You know, there's the emotion behind it. Yeah. Um, this means a lot to you, obviously. Yeah, the car, it really yeah. does, you know. It's a love-hate relationship. Sometimes she pisses me off, you know, but most of the time, it does all right. <laughs> Dude, that, I see why it's you called know. the Boogeyman. Yeah. That it, probably scared the rest of the neighbors over here. Everybody's like, what's going on? There's a shooting. I you think to, in today's day, I mean, it, it earned its name a little bit. Yeah. You know? Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.